Hello, I'm Dave Carger. Up next on this Saturday afternoon, we're heading into the wilderness of Africa for a lavish adventure from MGM in 1950. Starring Stuart Granger and Deborah Carr, it's King Solomon's Mines. Granger, in his Hollywood debut, plays an adventurous hunter and scout who's hired by a young woman, played by Carr, to help track down her missing husband who disappeared on a quest for the legendary treasure of King Solomon's Mines. The film was based on a novel by H. Ryder Haggard, and this 1950 version marked the third time the story was adapted for the big screen. This time around, MGM spent a fortune to produce it as a sweeping Technicolor spectacle, and the studio sent the cast and crew to Africa to make the entire film on location. Only a handful of Hollywood features had been shot in Africa prior to this one, and despite the studio's best efforts, the production had a difficult time preparing for the challenges of filming in the African wilderness. Temperatures were often unbearably hot, snakes and flies plagued the location sets, and many of the members of the cast and crew suffered from dysentery, malaria, and fever. The film's director, Compton Bennett, was even replaced midway through the production by Andrew Morton. Both directors are credited, and in the end, the result was a visually stunning and extremely popular adventure that, despite all the problems, went on to earn an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture. From 1950, here is King Solomon's Mines. The beautiful African landscape in King Solomon's Mines was captured by cinematographer Robert Surtees, who shot so much footage for this film that pieces of it went on to be reused in countless jungle adventures produced by MGM for years to come. His work on King Solomon's Mines earned Surtees the Academy Award for Best Color Cinematography, his first Oscar win after being nominated for 1944's 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. Over the course of his career in Hollywood, Robert Surtees received 16 Academy Award nominations, and twice he even competed against himself in the same category. In addition to his win for King Solomon's Mines, he also won the Oscar two more times for his black-and-white cinematography in 1952's The Bad and the Beautiful and his stunning work in color on the 1959 epic Ben-Hur. Up next, John Wayne gives a star-making performance in a 1939 Western directed by John Ford.